science stuff, you know, and it's because I am, that's what I do for a living. And basically, um, the weekly new scientists a lot. And you think it's sort of intellectual magazine that it wouldn't make this clear the mistakes that other people make. But no, they can be as stupid as anything else. But there's uh, this um, like, article about peanut allergy. This was a scientist saying that she had one and she went through it and it was terrible. Because not everyone's lucky as me. Because this woman, she died on Christmas Day of her peanut allergy reaction. And her husband, this is a quote from her husband, said, she must have died of eating a peanut, which was almost good, which was, must have been hiding in a bowl of mixed nuts. <laughs> <laughs> now, if someone told me, find me a peanut, a bowl of mixed nuts would be the second place I'd look. <laughs> the first place would be a bowl of peanuts. <laughs> if they were none to hand, I'd look in the mixed nuts. And then someone said, they walk here. Maybe she doesn't know she has peanut allergy. It was, okay, fine. But if you're doing any nuts, there's a bowl of mixed nuts. You just uh, discriminate against one sort of nuts. But then, you know, all nuts and nuts and everything. And that's that's racism, if anything. <laughs> and so, someone just going to point out to me later on and said, yes, but you know, a peanut's not a nut, it's a legume. So I'm going to point that out to me later on. And in advance, I'd like to point out to you that no one will ever love you. <laughs> It's not really you know, a conscious thing, it's because I started off doing this. I was working for two years at the corpse department for a medical school, which is a great job. I'm not going to lie to you. That's why I started doing this. I'm doing something more cheerful, more upbeat. And um, I actually practiced my first set in front of a room of 40 corpses. <laughs> and I thought, be good practice, do my jokes, in a room full of people, none of them would laugh. And yeah, I'm used to it. I'm never a pessimist, I know, I was doing a corpse embalming job. But of course, in my first gig, I played a bit, someone did laugh and shit myself. <laughs> Occasionally a corpse will piss itself, but that's not a metaphor for anything. <laughs> that's not what I do, that's not my actual job. What I actually do, I'm actually a neuroscientist, by the way. I'll be asking what that is. I'm not a neurosurgeon, to clean this up, I'm a neuroscientist. Neuroscientists and neurosurgeons, we know exactly the same stuff, but only neurosurgeons are allowed to actually touch the brains. <laughs> Which is a bit frustrating, you know, I feel, I feel like a teacher on the sex offenders register. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
just go all over the London Aquarium and throw it in the street. I'm sure it's a kind of way London is these days. Security guards at an aquarium. I don't know what they're for. People tapping the glass once too many, perhaps. We have a couple of revenge attacks against the steamers, the Australian tourists. I don't know. <laughs> but see, that's what I was getting. See, punch in the no problem. Fiddling case quick. You keep moving on to this. <laughs> Impulsively like that because it's that little voice in your head which is controlling you and it's evil. And the only thing does is get you in trouble. It tells you to do certain things. You know, it says, it says two things like, have a good bag, you feel, you feel fine in the morning. Yeah. Or tell that girl she's got a nice taste, and that's what they do. And the stupid thing is like, do it for that and other. Woo! Terrorism, eh? Wait, topical, that's topical. I know it's all day, but. But this is, I swear to God, that little thing in your head is nothing but trouble. This is a better example of college. First, we went first to university, not the university, up the public some gates, ran out of money pretty quick, went out of fiber, went on the road with cash points. Now, you know, a bit old is your thing, card in, 2047, put it up again, off I go. <laughs> and then I realized, hang on, I forgot something in there, check all it, no money in it, left it in the machine. Came back, start running past the can back to the cash point, before I get there, this monstrosity of a man approaches the cash point. I thought, oh, shit, he's gonna get my money. What can I do now? Uh, well, I'm not, not going to charge the guy because, you know, he's big and looks like he killed me just for existing. But I want my money. I'm sort of in the pond what to do. I don't know what the hell. Little boy's my head pipes up and just goes, hit him. <laughs> and I said, quite reasonably, why? He says, go on, he's not expecting it. Of course I'm not expecting it. I'm not expecting it. It would be a stupid thing to do. Why the hell would I do that? Because if you get money otherwise, I'm not sure I want it that badly, isn't it? I spent some time myself, I didn't stop running, I actually climbed into the guy, he sent him flying, I thought, crap, got my money, ran off straight away, just to make sure that he didn't get up and hit me even more. Now I thought I got away with that. Two years later, I had the cash point again, he got a presence behind me, turned around, oh shit, yeah, it's him again, it's that guy. This time he's bound to hit me and he has a good reason, so I can't even complain. He's going to kill me for sure this time, he didn't put it only for me, I don't turn around, I'll be alright. Sweating, trembling, run my car off, I go again. I go, oh, he yeah, left the money in the house. I thought, oh my god. Then the voice in the and goes, it's a big head. <laughs> I said, why are you now? It's gone, you'll be ironic. <laughs> but, you know, you shouldn't do that because what goes around comes around. And I firmly believe that because I was on a lecture once about uh, this memory test for kids who were telling us about called the bus story. Basically, tell a kid the story about a bus and show pictures of buses to see what they can remember. And he's Told the story, pretty straightforward. He suddenly goes, But you see, who would work in the imagination? Because we're middle class. We don't ride the bus. That's for working class people. It's disgusting on them. Have you been there? Full of fat, sweaty, unemployed people, those awful pregnant teenagers. I'm going to go on it. It's disgusting. It's disgraceful. I thought, well, Of course, what's that? But what do you mean? It's a lecture. You can't handle the lecture. I've known that the hard way. I thought, Well, he's going to get rid of that. Me. But you might be pleased to know that a few months later he had to take extended leave in disgust because. His teenage daughter was pregnant. I know it's amazing I'm going to prove a point, doesn't it? <laughs>